Good morning, children. We'll continue with the Java uh, programming language. Let me share the screen with you. Yes, yesterday I told you what's the meaning of object. I mean, in the previous class, I told you what is object oriented programming language, and I gave you an example of Manoj, the manager, and how he requires different objects to set up his computer lab. Now, what are the concepts of object oriented language? First thing is the object. So, we learned that uh, what is an object? So, what's uh, the object has two things. They have state and behavior. What do you mean by state and behavior? Now here, every object in OOPS, they have different properties, right? Properties are nothing but variables. Now, suppose if I uh, give a value to a variable, variable, so I need to name the variable. And they also have behavior. Behavior is nothing but the method. Okay, you wouldn't understand if I even tell you this way. Now let's take an example. There's an example, let's take the example of a dog. Now the dog has two things, that is the state and behavior. How do you differentiate what is the state and behavior of a dog? What would be the state of the dog? Its color, its name, its breed. So you know that the dogs have different colors, white, black, and whatever, brown. And you name your dog with different names, okay? And the breeds also are different. You have Pomeranian, you have a Doberman, you have a Golden Retriever, Snub Dogs. These are the different breeds. This is the meaning of state. So state is the color, name, and breed. But the behavior of the dogs, all dogs would be the same. All dogs wag their tails, they bark, and they eat. This is the behavior of the dog. So I hope you understood what is state and what is behavior. You'll understand more why are we using the word state and behavior. So object is an instant of the class. So what's the class here? The class is dog. And what would be the different other things, instance of dogs? You would have different instance, like different Doberman and this, different colors of dogs. So these would become the instance of the uh, dog, the state and the, and this is what is the meaning of instant. Now the next one is class. So as I told you, the main, uh, that is the object, the main object is nothing there but the class. So class, it is the blueprint of the other objects that are being created. It's under the uh, word dog, you could create many other types of objects. That is the different breeds of the dogs. So the blueprint would be dog would be the, the blueprint and the blueprint is nothing but the class. So the class, it acts as a blueprint to create the other objects. A class is a set of objects that share state and behavior. So the, uh, what is a class? It's an object and it has state and behavior. As I told you, the dog, it has state and it has behavior. And how do you define the class? Class is defined with different attributes. They are the class defines various attributes. As I told you here, these are all the attributes of the dog. And this is all the behaviors of the dog. So attributes are nothing but the state and the behavior. And it's instant. So it's not static. It's not static. So everything cannot be the uh, same. They are different colors, names, breeds. So it's not static. The instant may not be static make use of the attributes and this uh, since the instant is not static it makes use of the attributes and the uh, behaviors now let's take another example an example of a bird when you see all birds have the same attributes such as everybody has names you can have different names colors height and shape okay so they have the same type of behavior what's the same type of behavior that is flying so everyone has colors, but the colors may differ, heights may differ, shape may differ, but the attributes would be the same. And the behavior, it's the same for everyone. They all fly, the birds all fly. So therefore they can be grouped together as a class. The class would become birds. So where each bird is a distinct or an object of the class. Hope you understood. Here I've uh, put a picture of what 
I would like to explain. Okay. See, I've put here, the class would be bird. Okay. These are the different types of birds. So these are the objects of bird. Parrot, pigeon, crow, and eagle. And the behavior is common for all the birds. All of them fly. And these are the attributes of these things, or you call them as properties. Parrot, name. So the name, it can be a parrot, or the bird can name can be a pigeon, or it can be a crow, or it can be... Colors are different. Parrot would be green, pigeon would be gray, crow is black, and the eagle. So, and their height and shapes all differ. These are the different properties of the different birds. Okay. So this is how you classify an object. So class would become the blueprint of all these objects. All these come under the class, which is the bird. Now, what would you understand by method? So you understood what is class, what is objects, and what are the different state and behavior. The state, this is the state, and this is the behavior. This part you have understood. Now, what is the word method? Method is nothing. It is... A communication between the object for different types of work. So the object communicates with other objects. So one object communicates with other objects through things called message. So message is nothing but like a method that is being applied. So the object communicates with other objects through messages. But how would you, I explain it to you? Here there's an example. A woman, she is using a washing machine. Now, in this case, you have two objects, right? The woman and the washing machine. There are two objects, the woman and the washing machine. So when the woman starts the washing machine, it starts washing the clothes. That's the first step is doing. And when the men, woman switches off the machine, it stops washing the clothes. It stops. So the behavior of washing, uh, what is the behavior of the washing machine? It's washing the clothes. But how is it washing the clothes? So the washing machine is an object, I hope you know. And what's the behavior of it? It's doing the work of washing the clothes. But now, how, why is it, how is it doing that work? It gets a message from the woman. So it depends upon the message that is given by the woman. So that message is nothing but the behavior. That's how the washing machine starts washing. That's the behavior. That message that is received is nothing but the method. So when she when it receives the message wash, then the machine responds to cleaning the clothes. And, it, and when she says stop, it stops. So this message is nothing but method. Hope you understood what is class, what is object, what is behavior, what is the state or what you call as properties and what is method. With the, all the examples, uh, I think the you will understand it more clear. Now, there are certain features in OOPS. The very first feature is abstract. Abstract is, there are certain important the, uh, details in the objects. That is, they are the features where there are certain important details in the objects that, they, that are shown, but there are some things that you don't have. So these are simply things that you are looking out for that you want. So it is a feature in which only essential details of objects are shown. It simply means that you are looking out for what you want. That is the meaning of abstract. The next thing is encapsulation. It means hiding. You're hiding your data, the complexity of the data. So the working and how it's being done, these things are not being seen. They are already created in your program. So once you just write your program, it's doing all the compilation. So encapsulation, it means hiding the complexity of the data. It simply means hiding, data hiding. The next one is polymorphous. It is the ability to take more than one form. It's changing its form, okay? So when you start doing it, you'll know how uh, you are changing the different ways of doing your programs. So you'll be doing addition, subtraction, multiplication, even with mathematical calculations or any other thing. So this is the ability to take more than one form. Inheritance, it is creating a new class with the existing class. So as I told you how I showed you the different uh, birds, it is inheriting 
from the class, it's creating new class with the existing class. You know, the class is a main thing, okay? It's the a main object or the blueprint. It's blueprint is nothing but the class. So it is creating new class with the existing class along with some additional features. You saw different features when you were looking, the example of a dog, the example of a bird. So these are additional features. It allows reusability of the code. So actually these are all built-in information that is there in the uh, you know Java programming language and you keep using for the different um, works that you're doing for the different types of uh, objects of the class. Okay, Java programming introduction. Let's actually this, uh, I want you to now understand how the Java starts. Java is basically a high level programming language. It was uh, created by James Gosling and in June 1991, he named it as Oak because uh, he had uh, created this program and he's, uh, there was an oak tree that stood in front of his uh, office and he named it Oak. But then it was developed by Sun Microsoft System and it was released in the year 1995. What is the target of Java? The target of Java is to write a program just once. You can write it, run it on any type of platform or uh, any other type of operating systems. The pro program can be run on multiple operating system. Now, Java is a platform independent object oriented programming language. Please remember this. It's platform independent. You can use it on any type of platform and it's an object oriented language as I explained to you why we call it an object oriented language, okay? Now, actually, uh, when I show you how to, you know, um, create a path, uh, I would show you all these things also that are there when we are creating the path. So when I down, when you download the Java program, it's an open source software, so you can download, just download a Java 9, and you'll get it on the in your Google. You can just download it. It's a free download. It's an open source. So the first thing to, you learn is that if you want to execute a Java program, you need certain components. The very first one is called the JDK or the Java Developing Kit. What is the work of the Java Developing Kit? It's a software developed environment used for Java for developing Java program applications and applets. Why did they give only a, you? You have actually, you are doing only Java program, programming language. You're not going to do applets. Applets is a combination of Java and HTML together. Okay, that's applets. So it's used for both of them. And they include different uh, things like the Java runtime. You need to run your program. So it's a Java, Java runtime environment and you need to interpret the program gets interpreted. It's nothing but the loader it starts loading the program, the compiler to compile the program and achiever a document generator or called the Java doc. And other tools also are used in the developing kit. There are many other things. These are some of the things that are there in the Java developing kit. Yeah. And then you have the Java runtime, which is also called a JRE. So when you load, load, download Java, you have all these things. JRE is the Java runtime environment. It consists of all programs, your files required to run all the applications of Java programming language. JRE consists of also a JVM. JVM is a Java virtual machine. Um, uh, so you're already doing virtual classes, right? So it's like that. You're not, uh, you're not in the classroom, but you are attending classes online. That's nothing but virtual uh, classes. It's like a virtual machine. And the Java class libraries, this is where all your programs or libraries are being stored. They can contain the necessary function functionalities to start the Java program. So in the Java runtime, this is where your program starts working from the Java run runtime programming. Then Java class libraries or JCL, Java class library is a set of dynamic loadable libraries and that Java application uh, can call at any runtime. Okay, so when you are doing the path, you will understand where these libraries, how you uh, make the path with the libraries. Because the Java platforms are not dependent, so specific operating systems, applications cannot be relied. It can be worked on any platform, so platform native libraries. JCL provides a set of standard class libraries containing different methods. So 
you are not going to use only one type of method there are many types of method which is there in this library class of java java virtual machine just now i was telling you jvm java virtual machine it acts as an interface between the java application and the hardware system the java is a software implementation of a computer that executes programs like a real machine so all these are the built in programs that are there in this virtual machine it's an interface between the application or the java application and the hardware system you know the hardware systems of your computer the so the jvm interprets the byte codes just as how your cpu would interpret your assembly language i already told you what is assembly language high level language and now here you can see the jvm the operating systems and the hardware so these are the programs so what i told you here the jvm it acts like a java application to the hardware and the java software implementation to execute programs like a real machine now here there is a picture of a bottle i told you the jdk it has a compiler the debugger and the the runtime java runtime environment and under the J java runtime is the jvm or the java virtual machine and the java virtual machine has the java file libraries and the class file uh, that's the class file or the compiled file so i use the word bytecode what is a bytecode bytecode is the compile format of java programs for a java program okay it is the intermediate representation of java program produced by the java compiler once a java program has been converted into bytecode it can be transferred across a network and executed by the java virtual machine so next uh, we will be learning how to create the path uh, which i'll not tell you now i'll tell you in the i'll show how to create the path in the next class go through your worksheet dash is an instant of class object is an instant of class dash acts as a blueprint the class acts as a blueprint what is the computer language that has a set of rules that set of rules are they are mandatory uh, things that is the syntax dash is a sequence of steps algorithms is a se sequence of steps to solve the uh, problem to solve any problem okay. what is encapsulation encapsulation is data hiding and what does gre stand for java runtime environment multiple choice question java is an example of object oriented programming language b dash is the compiled format of java programs bytecode okay when it's co compiled it becomes a bytecode jvm acts as an interface between the java application and the hardware which acts as an interface the java virtual machine acts as an interface between the java application and the hardware creating new class with the existing class along with some additional are nothing but inheritance you are inheriting the properties of that class like i told you know the bird and then it's inheriting those now dash language resembles a natural language not process dependent that's a high level language which is java is a high level language c++ all these are high level language state with the true or false a set of instruction is called a program yes true computer language has a set of rules called algorithm no java is a procedure oriented programming language false it's an object oriented programming language polymorphous means creating a new class with an existing class no what did we learn polymorphous polymorphous is the ability to take more than one form a computer can understand only zeros and ones yes it understands only the binary format or the machine language which is zeros and ones and here's your lab activity please draw this in your uh, in your class workbook put the draw this picture so complete the following with suitable behaviors and properties so here it's a vehicle vehicle is a class and what's a behavior and property the it is start stop and speed this is same for all the uh, things and brand and all is the properties of it 
different brands, vehicles are of different brands, different models, different colors and gear. Depending on this only, these things are same. Okay, these behaviors are same. The behavior to start, stop, and uh, speed. But the properties are different. So depending upon these types of properties, you will choose your vehicle, right? A car, you do, it all depends upon the brand, okay? And here, who am I? I am the process of providing only significant information for outside members and hiding the background details. I'm an abstract. I am the process of enclosing the data and method in the same place. That is enclosing or hiding the data is encapsulation. I am the process of creating a new class based on the existing class. You are inheriting the class. So that is inheritance. When my method displays different behaviors in different instances, I am called the polymorphosis because it's changing the form. Polymorphosis is nothing but changing. Draw this thing also in your class or book. This is what your JDK consists of. It consists of the compiler, the debugger, and the JRE, or Java runtime. Under the Java runtime, you will have these two. When you load Java, you will see the JDK and the JRE. So when I am showing you the path, I'll show you how these things work. Hope you understood the class. In the next class, I'll be teaching you the how to create the path, and I'll be starting also the new chapter. Hope I can start the new chapter, but I need to uh, teach you how to create uh, the path. Thank you for now. Have a nice day. Go through the uh, lesson that I've taught you.